Hi, welcome back to Educator. Today we're going to be talking about recrystallization or just crystallization, sometimes it's called, which is a really uh, efficient and easy and inexpensive way to purify a solid compound. So if we have a solid compound, um, what we're going to do is we're going to, well, I'll call that the crude material. So it's got some impurities in it. Uh, the way we might know that it has impurities is by its appearance or maybe by um, more importantly by measuring its melting point and finding that it does not have a sharp melting point. So we could do a, a recrystallization to purify it. We're going to put our sample into our crude solid into an Erlenmeyer flask. Now what's great about an Erlenmeyer flask is with the flat bottom it will sit nicely unassisted on a hot plate so it's very easy to heat it. Um, it also with the narrow neck is going to minimize evaporation of our solvent because the solvent as it heats it's going to come up and hit the sides of the flask and reflux um, as opposed to heating something in a beaker it just evaporates way too quickly so we don't want to use a beaker for our recrystallization we're going to put our sample into an Erlenmeyer instead it's also very nice because we can grab the top and we can swirl it very nicely so an Erlenmeyer is ideal for mixing as well so we're going to put our sample into an Erlenmeyer flask and we're also going to use a beaker or uh, maybe another Erlenmeyer where we're going to use something to heat up the solvent that we're going to use. Now, um, if you're not provided with a solvent uh, and you have to figure out what kind of solvent is ideal for a crystallization, then um, what we're looking for is something you could test it on a very small amount of your sample, something that is not soluble um, at low temperatures, but when you heat it up, it is soluble. So that's going to be our goal. So we're going to heat up uh, some amount of our solvent, and um, when that's nice and hot and boiling, we're going to add a very small amount of that. We can use uh, maybe a paper towel to help handle um, a hot beaker. The crucible tongs are nice for Erlenmeyer flasks, uh, but even then it's a little you know dicey uh, to have control. So being able to use um, a uh, hot uh, something like a paper towel will give you a little more control so I can pick this up and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour just the smallest amount of solvent in here now of course remember I'm doing a totally dry lab here so I'm not wearing the protective equipment I'm not wearing my safety goggles which of course I'd be wearing and a lab jacket to protect myself and my clothing um, and you may or may not be wearing gloves uh, depending on what reaction you're doing but we're gonna add a small amount here and I'm gonna place it right onto the hot plate to make sure my sample is, uh, my solvent is staying as hot as possible. Because the goal here is to dissolve our, sol our solid in the minimum amount of hot solvent possible. We don't want to use too much solvent. So I can kind of swirl this around and look at it. Um, now, anytime we're boiling a liquid, we want to make sure that we have a boiling chip in here to promote even heating. What's handy for doing a crystallization is use a crystallizing stick. We could just kind of keep that in there. That provides a surface to facilitate the boiling. But unlike a boiling chip, it's very easy to remove at the end of the day when we want to um, do our crystallization and we're cooling. Otherwise, a boiling chip is something you're going to have to dig out later and uh, you know scrape the crystals off of. So anyway, we're going to be doing something like that. Now I'm going to be watching my, hopefully I'm going to be watching my sample dissolve in the hot solvent. Uh, now if there are any big chunks in there, I can use a glass stir rod to kind of break up those chunks because that's going to help dissolving swirling what might also help dissolving um, and so you know over time we're going to look and we're going to say well is that enough solid or not did it dissolve everything or not and if it looks like you still need that you still have some undissolved solids and it's clearly boiling so it's as hot as it could possibly get that means you need a little more solvent so we can we can uh, add in a little more hot solvent again just a tiny amount in small portions swirl 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 break it up as needed and eventually um, our sample is going to be uh, a, a solution where all the solid has dissolved. Now you may have something in there that's not soluble in the solvent. So it's an impurity that's not soluble and that is um, that's something we would want to filter off. But the point is that's never going to dissolve. So you don't want to keep adding solvent, adding solvent, adding solvent, trying to dissolve something that's not your compound. So sometimes you have to kind of think about what's what's in there and make that judgment call. Now, sometimes you're going to find that your sample is supposed to be a, a colorless um, a colorless compound, a colorless solid, a white solid, but there might be some color to your solution, some yellow or you know slight slight, slight color. Well, there's um, a way to get rid of that color that that color then is an impurity, and there's a way to get rid of that colored impurity by using something called activated charcoal. And so um, what we do for that <coughs> 
is we add in the smallest amount of activated charcoal and we swirl it around and that's going to just provide it's a very porous surface and all the colored compounds are going to um, get trapped inside that and then what we want to do is we want to do a hot um, filtration now one thing is you want to make sure that you're never adding uh, that charcoal to your solution when it's hot because uh, that could cause your uh, you know if it's overheated it may cause it to foam up right away so we're gonna very carefully add that when it's uh, when it's cooled so when if but but when we want to do if we do have to do an activated charcoal treatment again we want to make sure our solution with the charcoal in there is very very hot and we want to keep it hot as we filter off the charcoal um, because we don't as soon as we start to cool our solution our desired compound is going to be crystallizing out and be a solid. So we don't want our compound to crystallize out, um, so we need to keep the solution as hot as possible. So um, one thing that we do is we use a um, special kind of funnel. This is a stemless funnel. So this is a typical funnel, and this one has no stem. And, and that's because if you try to pour a hot solution th through this stem, it would most definitely cool, and as it cooled, you're crystals would come out of solution and it, this would just all jam up with solid. This would never filter through. So we're going to use this to keep it hot and to avoid if any crystals do crystallize out, they're not going to stop the, 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 the filtration. So we're going to do a hot